Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm releasing this. This is my ultimate mini wicking seedling propagation system. This device will allow anyone with any size print bed to print themselves a wicking self-watering seedling propagation system. Okay, so just under six months ago, I released these. This is my ultimate self-watering propagation dome device. It is a 3D printable propagation dome that allows you to start seeds and set and forget them, essentially just topping up the base reservoir when it runs out of water or nutrient. Now I have been using these a lot with a massive amount of success. This is definitely the easiest way I've found to raise seedlings so far. But I understand that not everyone has a printer that is 256 by 256, which is the Bamboo Labs print area. And I wanna make this method of raising seedlings available to as many people as possible. So I started brainstorming and came up with these. This is a 3D printable mini propagation system. And I've designed it to be printed on most 3D printers beds. So the widest part of this print at any point is 202 millimeters. So it should fit on most print beds. It won't fit on the A1 mini. However, you can use a slicer to scale prints to whatever size you require. So I do rely on some rudimentary slicer knowledge so that I don't have to tailor it to everyone's printer. Speaking of scaling, I have also made a six cell version of this, which will hold larger plants and is interchangeable between the lids of the 12 cell variant. So you can print out the bases and the domes and have them interchangeable between the bases and the cells so that you can print less stuff essentially and adapt to the seeds and plants that you wanna start. All of these trays, the bases match up identically to the base of the seedling tray and allow you to flip them upside down and push out your seedlings once they have matured. So make sure you print the right base for the right seedling tray so that when you're going about planting, you can easily push out your seedlings. The way that this print works is, so you'll need some wicking fabric. We lay our base down on the wicking fabric and roll it and then mark out how much of the wicking fabric you need. And you'll end up with something like this. We cut that out and now we have our fabric wick. The way that I've designed this all to go together is I've actually added in slots down the side of one of these prints. And this is going to give us the base that goes within our reservoir. We slide our wicking fabric through the slits on the side. So that's just going to help our wicking fabric stay on our base. This will then just slide into our base and on top of that, our trays full of grow media. And then on top of that, our propagation dome will fit like so. Now for the propagation domes, I've included two different styles of lid. One has a two millimeter top and the other is a two layer top. So this is extremely clear uh, and it's made for transparent filament. However, if you do not have your print settings almost perfect, you will get a failure because the first layer needs to be like dead accurate. If you're using the bamboo printers, that's probably already the case. That's just the way that I've designed it. So if you're not sure, go with the thicker topped one. So the other way that I've designed this system to work is that the alternative to printing 
the translucent dome and the base, which to make sure it's waterproof, you should probably layer with some gloss spray paint. But if you don't wanna do either of those things, if you don't have transparent filament or you don't wanna waterproof your base, the alternative is using these. These are just cheap propagation domes that are available from any hardware store. These are from Bunnings, they're about 10 bucks. What it means is you get a perfectly translucent dome and a perfectly waterproof base. And the size that I've designed these wasn't just for the smaller print beds, but also so that our bases can fit within these propagators. So these wicking sections will fit three to a propagator and you just place in seedling trays like so and you have a wicking propagation device. Now the lid doesn't fit on perfectly but you do not need it to fit on perfectly. This would just be to start the seedlings to keep the humidity up and then you would remove it after the first few days once the seedlings have sprouted. So this is the other way that this system can be utilized. These will fit in mostly any existing propagation system such as this. For the print settings, the dome prints upside down and with 100% infill, as I would recommend pretty much everything except for these. These spikes take up way too much infill, so just have it set on 15% for these spikes. And if you print these side by side with this, these can be printed at 15% as well. When it comes to grow media, I recommend a hydroponic grade of cocoa. 100% cocoa and make sure that you pack it down so that the cocoa reaches the base and allows the cocoa and roots to have contact with the mat that they are sitting on, which will allow the wicking action to occur. Now, I think that these systems work really well hand in hand with the scalability of the modular vertical hydroponic systems that we've been developing. As you print your tower and it grows higher and higher, you can gradually introduce plants with your printable propagators that you can pop straight out of your propagators and straight into your 3D printable vertical hydroponic systems. <laughs> And there it is. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hucho's. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hucho's. <laughs>